over the past couple of months, the industrials have come roaring back. Now that Wall Street finally realizes we may not be headed for an inevitable recession. In fact, the economy is surprisingly fine. Take CNH Industrial, the worldwide machinery company that makes agricultural and construction equipment. This stock rallied nearly 23% for the end of May from to its highs last Tuesday. Okay, on Friday, it pulled back a quick 6% in the wake of what some people thought was a mixed earnings report. We're going to dig into that. What happened here? While CNH beat the headline sales and earnings estimates, there were some plenty of issues that we got to find more about, including we could then expect a free cash flow. Management didn't raise their full year forecast. Even as they said they'll see more of a benefit from currency fluctuations, that's just organic numbers will be worse than we thought. I'm not sure about that either. Now, the stock's pulled back to $14 and change, so I've got to wonder if this isn't the viable dip. There's just so many good things happening here. Let's check in with someone who's an old friend of the show, Scott Wine. He's the CEO of CNH Industrial, to find out more about the quarter and his outlook for the future. Mr. Wine, welcome back to Mid Money. Jim, great to be back on. You know, the last time I was on was when we acquired Raven, and I, that's been about two years now, and so excited about where we're going on the technology front. You know, we just spent a half a billion dollars in the first half of this year on R&D. So our innovation pipeline, both on the iron side and the technology side, is just in a really, really good place. Well, this is so important because a lot of people tell me, what does a farmer do? There's global warming. This, the ground's got to be dry. There's fewer arable acres. We've got Ukraine. Isn't the way out of this morass and feed the world through technology? Well, certainly. I mean, I've said the whole game is productivity and yield and the technology, not to just the technology we put into precision farming and on autonomy, right. but also into the iron, using AI to make sure the grains come through our combines more effectively, more efficiently. So bringing that technology to the farmer, it does enhance their productivity and yield, and ultimately that's how we're going to feed a growing population. Okay, so some people are going to say, and you heard I had some caveats there about free cash flow and different things. I don't like to get caught up in too much jargon, and the reason why I don't is because there is no doubt about it that one of the great long-term secular themes is that we have a growing population still in this world, and we need you to feed them. So if I start talking about what happened this quarter, that quarter, I miss a bigger picture of what you're going to do to be able to make it so that in an era where, say, we're, we're short water or in an era where there's fewer and fewer acres, you can still produce as much food. Is it possible? Well, it's certainly possible. You know, Jim, one of the things that we're really excited about now is the methane tractor that we're bringing out, how we can take, you know, Capture, capture methane from a slurry pit on a farm, use it to power the tractor, to power the generator on the farm, and really to create a carbon negative environment for the farmer. But, you know, you, you mentioned the quarter, and I'm not at all uh, ashamed. I mean, our I know, that's I'm, why I bring it up. I'm, I'm, the Polaris days, when you had some, oh my God, the Polaris CEO is on today. I mean, you used to be, you used to come in when there was no snow, and you still, had, you still made, uh, made your numbers. Yes. No, but I was, we, but the reason that we had a little bit lower cash flow and actually a little bit lower sales, we were prudent. As we saw demand from farmers slow down in the Brazilian market, we cut back to make sure the deal, we gained market share, but we cut back so we didn't put as much inventory into the channel. That means we kept more inventory, so we have the tractors ready to sell to the, the dealers when they want it in the, the third and fourth quarter. But, you know, we took a prudent measure to protect the dealers right. rather than put more into the channel. In the meantime, the U.S., you're on fire. The big machines are going. So is that agribusiness just putting more and more money into what looks like a, a pretty good environment? Well, the cash crop business here in North America is as good as it can possibly <laughs> be. Something. You know, we had the best tractor production we've had since 2015. You know, we're going to have a tremendous second half for combine sales. We're working closely with our dealers to ensure that they get the retail uh, coming out on the other end. But, you know, we're really bullish on cash crop in general, but specifically here in the United States. Okay, so I know we shouldn't spend too much time on it because you got $4.8 billion in ag, but we got $1 billion in construction. And we're going to need everything we can when we have all the stimulus bills coming in. What does it look like for you guys in terms of just infrastructure U.S.? You know, the case construction brand is really strong. We had right. at Con Expo this year. We had a great event. And we launched so many new products that that's really what drove our 19 percent growth in construction. You know, and, and it was I, only 6.8 EBIT, but that's more than double the EBIT we had in the last couple of years. So we're on a margin trajectory um, positive. Stefano Pompoloni and his team do a great job with that business. And we're just really Talk excited. Talk a little more about that because not everybody knows about what you've done there in terms of. Uh, well, with construction, we bought the San Piero brand. So we have right. access to mini excavators and mini excavators of our own. We've got access to great electric technology and, and really a footprint serving the South American market. We're cash flow and um, income positive in Europe now. We've got a growing business in Asia. So we like our construction business. It's a smaller part of the business, but the brand is really strong and the opportunity for profitable growth is significant. I can't miss this opportunity. You are a vet. You have been one of our great support, the supporters of our program to help vets, and you've always done everything you can. 
And yet we've got this mess in Ukraine. Uh, sort it out for me. Tell me what should happen. And tell me what it means for the world and food. Well, I mean, certainly I'm just incredibly proud of the Brazil, I mean, the Ukrainian population, the work they're doing to defend their country and, and really seeing the West come together to provide them the support they need. You know, we lost, we backed out of a, a half a billion dollar business in Russia. We shut everything down, so we're out of the Russian market. Um, we still continue to sell into the Ukraine farmers. I mean, most of the farming is in the West and fighting is in the East, so we're able to have a, a little bit of business there. The grain, you know, the, the, the shutting down the, um, the port into the Black Sea really does, it's going to raise grain prices, which is horrible for the people that need those grains, mostly right. in, in Africa, but it is going to raise grain prices, ultimately better for farmers they are trying to sell. Now, uh, government stimulus does matter. Uh, where are we in Washington with government stimulus? Not just, we used to be, the, the government used to really help the farmers. Are the farmers just doing so well they don't need help? No, I think you know, we are seeing soft commodity prices come down. They're okay. still above the average norm, but you know the government will step in. Well, we're going to say it's only because big comp, high horsepower is working. But not everything's high horsepower. The other stuff seems a little soft. Yeah, we talked about our, our low horsepower tractors will be down about 20% in the Why? second half. No, it was really a, a pull forward in demand uh, during the pandemic years, yeah. so I think you saw that. And, and really lack, just the cash crop is where the strong, strong demand is. Our hay and forage business is doing better right now, so okay. we actually did a little bit better in the second quarter, but still expect to be slower than the, the higher. You are power. so fired up. You know it's true, because we've all through the years, you've always come to play. But I think you're just, I think CNH, I guess, can be trading here by the end of the year. It's going to be, we're going to think of it as American, and you're going to be the guy. No, we, we're certainly uh, on path to have a listing solely in here. We're going to delist from Milan. It's been a great, you know, having the dual listing right. when it served our purpose better, but we're really excited to, to be a, a real. Well, yeah. As always, I'm all in, Scott Wine. Yeah. Can't resist. Thank all right, you very good much. to see you. That's Scott Wine, CEO of CNH Industrial, one of the great industrial legends of our time. Mad Money's back here for the break. Coming up, Kramer wants to hear from you. Your calls on the thunderous lightning round. Next.